by his grace for our lesson today we are going to read from the old prophet Jeremiah uh, from the Old Testament and uh, reading from the 29th chapter Jeremiah verses 11 to 14 and that is the word of the Lord it says for I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end twelve then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you thirteen and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. 14. And I will be found of you, said the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, said the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. Amen. Now, the lesson we have before us today has to do with answered prayer and specifically it is to say it is thanking God for answered prayers. Thanking God for answered prayers. Why are we uh, thanking God as every human being in the world? It is our duty to thank God for every blessing that we enjoy, for every blessing of grace, mercy, health, success, victory, protection, wisdom, knowledge, the ability to wake up from our beds, to rise, to move our hand, our legs, and uh, to be able to have the activity to breathe. It is required of us as human beings to thank God. So we are thanking God today because uh, previously we have touched on lessons that dealt with uh, prayer, supplications, and specifically when we read uh, the passage on what God brought to our attention in the past uh, few uh, weeks, specifically we also read about uh, what we were told in First Timothy about praying for all, because at that time when we read it, God says, uh, he requires all, not just some. He says, uh, uh, first of all, I require you know, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness, or in all... Uh, righteousness as we uh, personalize it but the whole idea is that why should we be thanking God he has done great and mighty things uh, for us all and so it is a great uh, necessity that Christians continue to thank God for what he has done when we go over the scriptures we find that in addition to praising God for what we have enjoyed, it is also uh, our, our responsibility as Christians that we must thank God. So even if we have forgotten so many things that God has done for us over the past uh, days, weeks, months, and years, the fact that we are up this morning and hearing God's word and uh, uh, being in a, a service or listening to God's word, or having the ability to even speak, we have to thank God. 
because he has answered our prayer from the previous day. He allowed us to wake up. That is uh, considered answered prayer. But specifically, we also know that we are men and women of faith, which means we have to project. We have to uh, always think and believe that because we pray, the Lord Jesus Christ encourages us that when we pray, we should believe. So in this case, we are believing that the prayers that we offered last week and the previous week regarding situations that we feel must be presented as a supplication before the throne of grace, that God has already answered it. In terms of the president and also all the events, we want peace. And we are believing that God has already given us the peace. We want things to move smoothly. God has given it to us. And so if we have all of this to our advantage and believing that God has answered our prayer, then it is the responsibility of every Christian to thank God and praise God that God has done a wonderful things. And that's why when we read Psalm 107, uh, we find that uh, we are being encouraged that we, you know, he says, uh, uh, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. It is, it is basic that we need to do this. And so, and especially if God is good and his mercy endures forever, then all of the things that add to our blessing we have to give thanks, and especially when we pray for a specific uh, uh, need. So in this case, it is our responsibility to go before God and say thank you. And uh, what was required in those days when uh, God required the Israelites to uh, bring offerings. And so I uh, think we can start with that and see what they were required to do. And so let's go to Leviticus chapter 7 And this is the word of God that he is giving to all. He says, Leviticus 7, 11 and 12. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer, which is uh, the person bringing the offering, shall offer unto the Lord. 12. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving, unleavened cakes mingled with oil and unleavened wafers anointed with oil and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour uh, fried. So this is uh, the requirement God uh, gave. So let us also go to Numbers while we are in the Old Testament to see another passage where God is uh, giving us the his instructions numbers 6 and here we are also being guided and this is what he says Numbers 6, 14, and 15 says, And he shall offer his offering unto the Lord, one he lamb of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering, and one he lamb of the first year without blemish for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish for peace offerings. 15 and a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour, mingled with oil, and wafers of unleavened bread, anointed with oil, 
and their meat offering and their drink offering. So that's part of uh, offerings that one is supposed to be bringing, but there are more, not just uh, that. Again, this is uh, a sin offering and a peace offering. Now, what is the men of old do when they were giving thanks. They gave thanks when they came before God or in their various uh, situations and locations whenever it was necessary to thank God for what God has done. So let's uh, go and see what King David also says, King David, in his psalm, Psalm 25, 1 to 6.